Hi, my name's Norm. Welcome to another Summit Racing Equipment Quick Flicks. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, primary tubes, okay? Uh, not so much collectors today, but we're going to talk about primary tube uh, diameter, OD, and uh, the primary tube length. Before we go into that, though, I would just like for you to think for a moment about the combustion process, that four-stroke uh, event, uh, which most modern uh, internal combustion engines share, okay? Uh, and I'm particularly focusing on the exhaust side of things today. Uh, if we, we get into more theory down the road, we'll come back and think perhaps about the intake side and the, the actual combustion side of things. But I want you to think about uh, the fact that combustion has just occurred, okay? So we've had the big bang, the controlled explosion in that chamber. That explosion mechanically forces the piston to, to move towards bottom dead center, okay? At or near bottom dead center, your exhaust valve is going to open. As the exhaust valve opens, you know, your gases are, are going to be evacuated. Uh, the reason for that and the reason for more efficient evacuation is to make more power, okay? The efficiency behind the evacuation of that cylinder allows more or hopefully all the spent gases, all the byproducts from that previous combustion event to be evacuated from that cylinder. This allows the intake portion of combustion to fill a fresh voided uh, cylinder. So the more I can pack more uh, power molecules, for lack of a better word, into that cylinder, um, more carbon, hydrocarbons, and air, more air fuel mixture into that cylinder. Okay, so that's what my primaries do, hopefully do, my, my header system will hopefully do. Now, I want to base that information around my build, okay, my cubic inches. And we're going to see here that when we look at primaries in theory, we're probably going to look at, at cubic inches per cylinder. Uh, also around cubic inches and RPM. So I want to know where my peak RPM for my build is going to be. Very important to have this kind of information in your mind or at least as a plan as we come into this theory and we look at primary tubes. Okay, okay so today's formula. I want to solve uh, for a primary pipe area. Uh, in doing so, I will know what type of primary tube diameter I'm looking for. Uh, once, I dis once I discover and find out my primary tube diameter, I can then look at primary tube length uh, as an enhancement to that information, okay? First of all, our initial equation tells me that peak torque RPM equals the primary pipe area times a constant of 88,200 divided by the displacement of one single cylinder. Now, to simplify things, let me, let me say this. I'm going to work with a 350 cubic inch motor. Um, I have 5,000 RPM in mind for my peak torque or my peak torque enhancement. So I'm going to actually rearrange my equation to solve for the unknown of primary pipe area, or PPA, okay? So PPA would equal the peak torque RPM divided by 88,200, my constant again, and then times the single cylinder displacement. Now the primary pipe area is going to be the diameter, uh, or pardon me, the area of the ID, so it would be area equals pi r squared. Uh, and in this case, I'm measuring the OD, and I'm taking away the wall thickness twice to come up with my primary pipe area for my 1 and 5 eighths, 1 and 3 quarter, and 1 and 7 eighths primary tubes. I wrote that, that information down already to simplify uh, our, our being together today, okay? Just to make things easy. Uh, a 1 and 5 eighths is 2.07 inches squared. A 1 and 3 quarter is 2.19 inches squared. Uh, 1 and 7 eighths is 2.53 inches squared. 
my single cylinder displacement, which I also need to know, based upon my 350 cubic inches divided by eight cylinders per those 350, works out to like 43.75 cubic inches per cylinder. Okay, so when I start doing the math and plug everything in, remember I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the fact that I have a primary tube diameter. I'm solving for my RPM because I want to get in this 5K range for my race car. I want to peak torque around five grand. I will know in my mind that horsepower should be beyond that. So um, I'm looking for 5K. When I do the math, I find that a 1 in 5 eighths primary tube peaks around 4175. A 1 in 3 quarter primary tube peaks around 4415. Still not quite to my 5000 RPM range. I, when I look at a 1 in 7 eighths primary tube diameter, I notice that theoretically I'm at 5100. Okay, so really very close to what I'm after. Now bear in mind that for your application, you're only going to have so many possibilities. It might be, <clears throat> it might be ideal that a 1 and 13 sixteenths would put me right at 5,000. To the best of my knowledge, nobody makes a 1 and 13 sixteenths primary tube diameter. Okay, so it is a compromise when you start looking at uh, what will fit your chassis and serve your purpose, unless you have really deep pockets. After solving the equation, we can see that my 1 and 7 eighths primary tube diameter is going to give me the, the results that I'm after. Okay, so now I can tailor uh, what's going to happen with my 1 and 7 eighths primary tube by thinking about length at this point. Okay, so if I extend and make my primary tube longer, I'm going to add more emphasis below the 5,000 or 5,100 RPM and, and add a flatter uh, torque curve on that side. If I shorten it and extend, uh, or pardon me, if I shorten it and don't extend the primary tube length, I'm going to emphasize uh, a flatter curve and more torque available on the higher RPM side of 5,000 or 5,100. So I hope you've picked up on this. Uh, next time we'll look at collectors and maybe some uh, exhaust wave uh, theory like that. Uh, hopefully explain some uh, timing events possibly also as it involves your exhaust system. Uh, so if you like this, uh, this quick flick, please post down below and uh, thank you for watching.